And I think Paula will be, uh, she will log in to say hi to everyone. Slovakia, welcome. Oh, wow. A lot of representatives coming from Europe as well. Beautiful. All right. So let me, um, oh, Italy and Argentina. Wow. Italy, uh, yeah, I, I did want to uh, work in Italy. It's one of my the fam uh, favorite cities in the world, um, Rome. Love that place. But I also nearly got divorced in Italy as well. Back in the day when there wasn't any Google Maps, I was using paper maps and my wife was navigating <laughs> through, through, in, uh, through Italy. So I went from Rome to Florence to Venice. And uh, it's funny because when you're driving, all of a sudden you're off on the freeway and then you get into the town and no one speaks English. So that was quite interesting. China, phenomenal. Great Wall of China, amazing one of the wonders you have to visit in your lifetime. Cool. All right. I hope everyone is well and welcome. We will kick off now. Let me just share my screen. Um, oh, okay. So <laughs> this is actually, um, a, a shot of um, a cohort of startups from Mexico. I was running an accelerator program at Google Launchpad. And uh, this is my cohort from Guadalajara. So that's funny. All right, let me, perfect. Um, Nico, can you see this? Yes, I can. Okay, so I hope everyone's well and safe. Um, my name is Chris Peralta. And today um, we're gonna cover how to start a business as an international student. So I'll take you through 10 tips and um, we, will, um, we will have some time at the end for Q&A, as I mentioned. If you have any questions, um, please ask it in the chat or um, um, at the end, uh, you can also um, turn on your camera and your microphone and ask the question. Throughout the presentation, please be mindful um, that we have a lot of participants, so please keep yourself on mute um, if you're not asking a question. Okay. Let's see if we can move this slide. All right, perfect. So um, does anyone know LinkedIn? Nico? Of course. Of course, yes. So Are you know, you're there's in? Okay. Here. so there's 756 million users on LinkedIn. I don't know if you know, and it's the largest professional networking uh, networking um, site on the internet. Um, there was they were acquired from Microsoft, I think, for like 20, 30 billion dollars in 2019. But there was a really interesting um, quote from Reid Hoffman, who's one of the founders there, and he said. All humans are entrepreneurs, not because they should start companies, but because the will to create is encoded in our human DNA, which is quite interesting. So everyone, I believe, has the entrepreneurial DNA in them. What do you think, Paula? Do you, do you agree with that, with Reid Hoffman? I think everyone is not just born to be an entrepreneur, but also to make the world a better place. And I think that's the best way for you to be an entrepreneur is find a problem that really bothers your heart and you feel like it's your responsibility to create a solution, collaborate. I had a couple of meetings today. It was really interesting. We're very, very, very successful entrepreneurs. And we were all talking about the power of being together. Like today, right now, we've got 85 of us and together we can change the world. It's about transforming a problem into an opportunity and collaborating, but the reality is that it's in our DNA, 100%, Chris, like not yeah, even 100, 1,000 <laughs> percent. So actually I started my entrepreneurial journey when I was, I, I think 10, I don't, don't know exact um, age, but I was delivering um, newspapers 
And I remember also my, my mum still has this book somewhere in, in a box, but I, I created this book of, a, of an entrepreneur in New York when I was 10. It was amazing. So um, I think we all have it in us. But a quick background of who I am, who you're listening to. So my name is Chris Peralta. I've actually lived um, overseas for the last 20 years. Um, I grew up here in Australia. I lived in Singapore as an expat for six years. That's why I, I was lucky to, to, to um, venture to all these amazing countries where all you guys are from. Um, I then moved to New York um, and I lived there for three and a half years. And then uh, in the last 11 years, I was in Silicon Valley. I moved back two years ago. Um, and my background when I was in Silicon Valley, I mentored more than 500 startups um, from 20 countries around the world. I was very, very, very fortunate to be um, one of the first mentors at Google Launchpad in Silicon Valley. And um, it gave me that exposure to a lot of um, amazing uh, talent over there, investors and the whole ecosystem. And this is just an image of, of, um, of me with a cohort from Guadalajara, Mexico. And I did eight batches uh, with the government in Mexico. Um, I spearheaded more than 100 plus uh, acceleration and immersion programs. I dabbled in investment um, back in the day. My last company exited Google two or so years ago. Um, and I started, uh, we started a fund here in Australia, a small one with my amazing co-founder and uh, partner, Paula Mills. So that's a bit of background of me and my superpower. I love building relationships and doing deals. And that's who I am. But enough about me. So before we start, I just wanted to have a quick survey. And please, uh, Nico, if you can help me, um, just put in the chat box, um, let me know either ha one, have you a business, do you have a business idea? Um, or have you already started a business on the side? Or, and th or three, um, do you want to start a business? So just give you a couple of seconds. And then Nico can give me a quick tally so I know who's in the who's in the audience here. Wow, a lot, a lot of people have their business idea. Oh beautiful. Let me, let, let me give a quick rundown of, of everything. And also a lot of people want to start a business. So I think this is a very this is a perfect session for uh, for those people. So perfect. Like I have to really scroll up so I can see all of the responses to Kumar Magar. He wanted to start a business. I hope I pronounced the, the name correctly. Um, Nandesh Patel also wanted to start one. So he answered number three. Um, so majority of the answer um, in the in the section is a thing we have at least ninety percent of people wanted to start a business. Wow! And roughly um, eight percent would wanted to have have a business idea, and um, the remaining percentage have started the business already. So this is really a good crowd to talk Beautiful. about how to start a business. Okay, awesome. Now, did you know? that it's estimated that 50% of the workforce will be business owners or freelancers. Um, and I was also looking at another study the other day um, from, it's an American one from monster.com around, they surveyed around a thousand employees, uh, US workers, 95% of people were actually considering to leave their jobs. So why do you think, why do you think people want to leave their jobs? Quick, quick survey. Nico, if you can uh, let me know so I don't change the yeah. slide. <laughs> so, yeah. Kumar, want, um, he wanted a financial freedom. Um, freedom, yes. For some, they're not happy. Um, sorry, I, I can't pronounce the name, but the last name is Zemek. Um, he wanted to find happiness. Maram wanted for freedom. Ellen Young, um, I think she wanted more money. Everyone's yeah. wanted, <laughs> and um, Nicole also. Um, I think she wanted to. Um, he wanted to make um, 
to make her own ours. And Nandish Patel said, and happy with the working environment. Yeah, so from this survey, 60% or more were burnt out, first of all, from their day-to-day -day job or grind, they said. But 30% wanted more growth opportunities. So they found that in corporate or uh, in their job today, they didn't have too much growth opportunities. But I think, um, and I saw, um, I was doing some research as well a couple of months ago, more than 70 million Americans, sorry, I don't have the number for Australia, they have a side hustle. And the interesting, it's not that number that's interesting, which is quite big, but they were, they were doing it exactly what you guys have said in the chat box. One, they wanted to um, have more money, they want dis more disposable income. Two, they, they just needed money to make ends meet, to pay the bills. And three, uh, people wanted to save money. And it was very, very hard for them to do that in their current um, jobs. So quite interesting studies. And I'm happy to share those, those, those links to those studies as well. Um, what's interesting with the pandemic as well, it's, and even before the pandemic, um, you know, everything was going online. So e-commerce, there's more than 2 billion people in the world, you know, purchasing goods online. It's translating to $4.2 trillion worldwide of revenues or traffic or spend, I should say. And 63% uh, of shopping occasions begin online. You know, that journey is not um, that straightforward because people go online and offline. You know, some people still want to go to the store and touch and feel the product. Um, I like to do a lot of compa comparison shopping. So I would go to the store, but then I would search online on my phone and I'd compare the prices and things like that. So these days, the phone and, you know, online, it's a tool for us, right? 50% uh, of consumers shop more on their mobile than in store. Um, so this is a growing, growing number. And Chris, I saw something a couple of weeks ago, um, voice. So when you speak like to Alexa, Siri, 43% of purchases in the United States are actually starting through voice search now. Insane. So here we are making our Instagram pages look beautiful. The viewers yes. are having a conversation with the machine around the shopping needs. Insane. No, definitely, definitely. And, um, you know, this, it's, you know, the pandemic has also, according to Forbes, is fueling this global growth of entrepreneurship. And uh, what they say is a startup frenzy. And um, their, their, their uh, article I read uh, the other day shows that in the US, 77% um, of, there was 77% new businesses year on year. So from 2019 to 2020, there was 77% more um, people starting a new, their own business. And it's, um, it's also a global phenomenon. It's not just in um, America. Um, you know, in all around the world, there's growth of 20 to 30% um, in terms of people wanting to start their own company. Um, I also put this here as well, which was quite interesting. Um, 20 small businesses that thrive also through the pandemic. So there are um, types of um, industries that uh, can withstand these pandemics. But I think what's more interesting uh, from my point of view is that there are new ideas and new um, new business opportunities born um, from after these big um, crises, global crises. So it's quite interesting. So now's the time. <laughs> so why are you here? So um, I heard the other day that you don't have to be good to start. You just have to start to be good. Definitely agree. A lot of the times, the first step is the most important. Um, but most people want it to be perfect. And it never, ever is. Because if you want it to be perfect, you'll most surely start your business in 10 years' time. <laughs> so that's why a lot of the, a lot of the times entrepreneurs... They take that first leap of faith, okay? So today we're going to go through 10 tips for you to start a business in Australia as an international student. So the big question is, 
can you <laughs> on, on your student visa? The answer is yes, okay? So let's get started. Um, so the first step, I, I, want, to, I want to show you a, uh, a video and this is really, really important. It's a concept called um, Ikigai. Can anyone, um, has everyone heard of Ikigai? Just let me know in the chat. A lot of people say yes. Nanda, JC, John, Suzanne, yes. Mahimi, Ali, Ling Ling. Beautiful. Um, someone said no, though. Timar, Maram, Kumar, okay. sorry, Mohammed said yes. Yusuf said no. So don't worry, guys. If you don't know about it, it's the perfect time to learn about it. Yeah, well, this is actually a, a terminology. Um, um, that it's been around for a while. It's it's a it's, it's a compound of two words from Japan, meaning um, iki meaning life or alive, and kai meaning effect or result. And um, I think the important thing here is to arrive at a reason for living, for being alive, which is I think really important. So let's just listen to this quick video, and then we'll talk about it. Here's a Japanese word, word called ikigai. It's used to help us understand our relationship with the world around us and how to choose what we want to do with ourselves. The ikigai concepts ask you to understand the things that you love doing, the things which are great, the things that others need and the things that others will pay for. So for you, it's about knowing what you love and knowing what you can really do. And for others, it's about understanding their needs and understanding what they're willing to pay for. These are all different things. When you find something that you love and at which you're great, concept of Ikigai calls that your passion. And there's a lot of commencement speech address kind of things that says, follow your passion. I'm not a big fan of that because passion is all about you. It's all this big self-centered idea that the world should just provide for what you love and what you're great at. If you get away from the idea that we all should just be following our own passion, we should be sensitive to what the world needs and what it's willing to pay for, then we might find ourselves going down the love route and providing for what the world needs, which Ikigai calls a mission. Or we might find ourselves going down what we're really great at and what the world is willing to pay for, which Ikigai calls a profession. If we completely set ourselves aside, if we weren't considering ourselves, but we were only responding to the world around us, that is others, we might find that the world is willing to pay for something that it needs. And despite the fact that we don't love it and we might not be great at it, we could call it a vocation. Sometimes that's called a job. The ideal is to find what you love, what you're great at, that the world needs and is willing to pay for. Find your ikiga. Okay, give me one Here's second. There we go. All right, so um, it's it's a really amazing concept because it, I believe it encompasses holistically um, everything about you. Now, one, I'm always a proponent of finding your superpower. It's very, very important that you know what your strengths are, right? A lot of the times um, entrepreneurs also lead with passion, but sometimes you might be doing something that, the world might not need. So this is a great concept. 
Now, the fourth component, which I believe is the most elusive, <laughs> is um, being paid for it. So you really need to find, uh, when it comes to startups or when you're starting your own business, a, a, the key word is business. It's not startup. It's actually finding a business. And so this is a great concept. Now, I just want you to um, um, spend two minutes um, and I want you to fill in or, you know, just on a piece of paper or your laptop, um, tell, write down what you are passionate about, what you truly love, what you are awesome at, which is your passion, oh, sorry, your superpower. So your passion, your superpower, what you believe the world needs that will help you um, bring your company or your idea to life. And at the end, um, write down what you believe the world will pay for. And if you can't fill them all in, no problem. So let's do two minutes. And then um, for the brave souls that want to share in the uh, chat, please share in the chat. I'm just going to put my timer. Fifteen more seconds. Okay, stop. My time it didn't alarm can go on. Nico, what did uh, what did we hear from the audience? Right. So from Yan Liu, um, she wrote coffee. Coffee, so superpower. <laughs> I couldn't agree on that, Chris, because I think I've replaced my blood with coffee already. So that's my blood, my blood. Anyone else share anything? Yeah, guys, feel free to share on the chat box, and we're reading it. Yella Pagada said medicine. Maram said Arabic books, weights need languages and culture. Oh, that's truly really good. All right, one more, Nico. And um, from Ken Yuang said photography, design, and one more we have from Simar, fashion. Okay, awesome. So the next step, um, typically when you start a business, um, you think about a big problem you want to solve. So um, one comes to mind, um, there's a company, have you heard of Shopify, Nico, or anyone? Oh, definitely. Yeah. So I don't know if you know the background, but the founders were looking for a shopping cart solution. So when they were starting um, uh, their e-commerce site for snowboarders, so they were unable to find one. So they, what did they do? They decided to build it and then it became Shopify. So they started with a problem and then they moved forward. But what's, what I believe is you really need to figure out what's a real pain point. You know, it's something where, you know, people's hair's on fire. They're like, oh man, if I can't do my job because, the, because I don't have this. You know, this, 
the the problem needs to be really clear and really painful. <laughs> you know, it's a real problem. So um, businesses, when you start with a real problem, um, that's typically where you start. Um, also, companies, um, it's important to lead with a purpose. And there's this amazing initiative um, by, um, in, I think it was in 2015, to so the United Nations Sustainability Goals. And there's 17 goals adopted by um, 30, I think 30 plus members or 30 plus countries. And at its heart, um, it's an urgent call for action by all these countries developed and developing um, in global partnership to end poverty, to, um, you know, other deprivations, you know, hand in hand with like um, improving health and education, uh, reducing equality um, and, you know, spur economic growth but um, also tackling climate change. So these are these amazing goals defined by the United Nations. And, you know, I think it's always good for you guys to look at that because then there's also some, some other purpose as well when you start your, your own business. Um, once you have an idea and, you know, you want to bring it to market, um, I think, um, you know, you start with the problem. And this is um, a one-page business plan and, and basically, it's meant to simplify the, the whole overview of your business. Now, you will also do end up be creating a, um, you know, a full business plan, but this is a great exercise for you and your team. Um, and it's good to have someone else to, to work through it because then you can challenge each other. But it's good to outline in, in a sim simple one pager you know, what the problem that you're solving, what your solution and how you're going to solve it. Um, who, what's your value proposition, you know, to your audience? What's your differentiation in the marketplace? You know, who are your competitors and how you are different? Um, what are your customer personas? So who are the customers that are going to use your product or service? How are you going to find them? Where are, the, where are the channels to market to get to them? Um, you know, is it social media? Is it online? Is it offline? Where are the channels? Um, what are your key metrics? It's always important to have goals and um, metrics that you're going to um, you, you target towards. What's your business model and revenue streams and the structure? Um, at the end of the day, you want to get paid for it. Um, you need to make it sustainable at the end of the day. You need to pay your bills um, and you need, you know, I think the key here is really business. You want to create a business plan. So it looks easy. It's actually quite hard, <laughs> um, but it's a good outline, very high level on, um, you know, uh, one, one page overview of your business. So this is a great exercise um, to do. Um, there's a, there's a, um, concept called Lean uh, Canvas, which is um, the, the basis of this, um, this actual ta uh, table. All right, so that's step two. Um, any questions so far? Because we're moving a million miles an hour here. We only have an hour to go through all these top 10 tips. Nico, do you have any questions so far or please so unmute yourself? all good, but we have comment from Yala Pagara. I, I think she said, yes, I have done it before and that's a great thing. Every, exactly. Beautiful. And there's more um, detailed um, um, templates that you can look at. Um, you can do a lean canvas, which is high level, but then you can do a business canvas as well. Um, and it's a great exercise. If you have a whiteboard, get a big whiteboard and put it on a whiteboard so you can actually see it and visualize it. Like I said, it's always good to have someone else there because they can um, not poke holes at it, but they can ask questions. Like when you think about putting together a plan, you have a lot of assumptions in your head and it's from your own perspective and your own research. It's always good to get someone else to take a step back, look at what your plans are and challenge, right? It's always good to challenge, okay? Um, having that positive but um, 
playing devil ad, devil's advocate. You know, you don't always want um, everything to be yes, 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 because that's not the real world. You want to be challenged. Um, step three, sorry, we got to step three. Um, then, you know, choose a name. So um, choose a name, um, make it easy, um, not too long um, that people can understand. But then again, um, does anyone give me an example or does anyone know um, Google? Like what's the, the, the um, why do they name Google Google? Does anyone know? So I don't think Google meant anything before they made Google. Yeah, well. I heard that they just mis misspelled the name somewhere. <laughs> I've just heard, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're halfway there. They actually, um, they played on the word um, Google. So oh, yeah, that's a good answer. G-O-L. Um, but there's a, the other half of it was they actually named it from um, the number one, followed by 100 zeros. Um, so there's there's a reason behind the name. Um, and the search engine was intended to provide large quantities of information, which it does. Everyone just has all the information on Google, right? So that's that's the ba the base the base the basis of the name. Um, Apple. What about Apple? Like, does that represent anything? Does anyone know the origins of Apple? I'm afraid, Chris, you have to tell us. Newton um, by Angie. She said that it's from Newton. Newton. Wasn't it something also he wanted to start with the letter A to stand out from the competition on alphabetical order? Yeah, I think that was, there's a lot of different, um, um yeah. uh, uh feedback from people um and even i think there was a you know um with steve wozniak as well there was a different view but i <laughs> what i read uh, a while a long time ago um it was actually he was he just came from a um picking apples from an apple farm <laughs> and he thought it was fun it was um relevant at the time um it was um i think he said it was spirited Fun um, and not intimidating. Uh, that what was that one? And not intimidating. There you go. Yes, not not intimidating. That's the one. So yeah, there's sometimes the company's name. There's no real background to it or relevance, but there is some significance to the founders, right? But um, typically, you'd use a name that's easy to say, not too long, and then um, for these big companies, they ended up creating the the brand equity around it, and then it became a, a household name. Chris, before you proceed to the next one, I um, just wanted to throw this question from Daryl Gomez. Yes, um, please. It's asking, what would revenue streams mean in the business plan? Great question. So let's move back there if I can. Okay, here we go. So um, revenue streams is is your business model. So if let's take an example. If we look at um, something simple, an app, right? Um, there's different ways of making money through an app. One, you can charge for to download, 99 cents. So that business model is um, a paid, um, in a paid app. Second, you can have advertisements. So you can put ads in there. So it will be an ad model. So that's another business model. Third, you can have subscriptions. So you can charge, say, 99 cents a month. So people can pay a subscription. And there's a lot of movement towards subscriptions, like with Netflix and others. Um, fourth, um, you can have um, in-app purchases. So when you're playing a game, it could be free because everyone's um, used to freemium model in apps and you, you know you, you buy get the app for free, download it for free, but then to unlock certain levels or get um, certain privileges or, or features, you have to purchase things. So there's in-app purchases. Um, what other models are there there? So there's different streams, um, um, revenue streams of making money. 
So freemium, in-app purchases, ads, um, paid, transactional, things like that. So that is the revenue streams. Did that answer your question? We did a couple of events on finance for startups and revenue models in the last two weeks for studying New South Wales. So I'm yep. going to pop my email down here and then just send me an email and then I can send you the recording. Then you'll get a full hour explaining how it works. So I'll put it in here. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. It, it entails a lot. It entails another hour of discussion. So I think we um, that, that's the short answer, Daryl, that, that Chris can give you. But if you wanted to know more, just send us an email. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's always good as entrepreneurs to um, experiment, right? So you have, may have an assumption that, oh, I'm going to go subscription because everyone else is going subscription. I'm going to go freemium because everyone else is freemium. But it may not work for your business. So, you know, it's a trial and error as well. Um, but before you bring it to market, it's always good to test it. And we'll come to that. But test it in the market. See what... Um, is actually resonating with consumers because sometimes you think, oh, anyone would pay 99 cents for this app. But the, 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 the thing is, everyone's used to not paying for apps. So your assumption that there's so much value in this app, people would pay for it, it's not necessarily true. So you have to really get it in the market and get feedback from the market, your users. Okay. Um, once you find a name, you know, or have an idea of a name, you can check out um, if it's already been registered. Um, you can uh, check it at Name Checker. Um, it's always, obviously, these days, um, you know, your digital footprint is also very important. So not just um, having it on a business card, but um, also having, um, you know, your digital um you know, asset about your business, but creating a very simple logo is, is the, is one of the first steps. Um, I guess Apple was quite, um, quite easy to create the Apple, but the, the bite, I don't know the significance of the bite, but um, um, it's very simple and easy um, and impressionable as well. So there's different um, sources to resources to go to create your own logo. Um, but just think about, you know, Ikigai, think about your purpose, think about, you know, the consumers you're, you're, you're also, gets inspiration about the overall thought process when you're starting your own company, um, you know, infusing that in the logo. But the most important thing is make it simple. Don't make it complicated, make it simple. And you can always change it later on, okay? So don't worry if it's not right the first time. Um, the next step is um, creating a website. So very, very important because at the end of the day, when you're talking to people about your company, um, your idea, your service, your solution, um, you're going to direct them to some someplace or they're going to say, what's your company's name? And they might do some research about you. And so you, you want to have a simple website name. Therefore, the name must be simple in the beginning. And um, so people will understand. So go to, I have a company, Silicon Valley Headquarters, siliconvalleyhq.com, or we have Academy of Entrepreneurs. Go to Academy of Entrepreneurs. It just makes sense. It's so simple. Um, so then also the content. Uh, when you're in the website, the more overwhelmed people are, the more less likely they are going to continue and scroll. A lot of the times they see the first page and then they won't venture in. And there, there are a lot of different statistics that you can search on the internet about um, the first landing page or the first screen they see is the most important real estate. So this is the most important place where you have to get your value proposition or your messaging correct and a call to action, right? Make sure there's a call to action. So here it's like get started and there's a big bold um, message here on the web on the website. Um, and then you'll see that, you know, if you keep scrolling, 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 not many people will end up um, scrolling further all the way down to the website unless they really want to and the, or need to, right? So create a very simple website. Simplicity, the mantra of simplicity is key in everything you do. Um, the next step, um, and my apologies, I'm rushing through this because I'm just cognizant of the time and I want some time for Q&A at the end to help you, you guys if you have questions. Um, so step five is proof of concept. 
we talked about um, you know our assumptions and it might be different to what the the market or our customers want or need so it's very important that um, you bring a product to market and you get feedback from your customers and sometimes we call it a proof of concept um, we want to bring uh, there's a terminology called mvp a minimal viable product so you want to bring a product fast to market get feedback fast from your customers and then you can build measure and learn so you can learn from that and then you can rebuild and, and develop a product that actually consumers will use and pay for at the end of the day so this is very very important um, yeah, um, there's one you can, um, in, in, if you cannot create a product, um, you can also just get feedback from users or potential users and showing them screenshots or just talking to them. So um, a lot of the times with, with my startups in, when I was in Silicon Valley is we would go to um, Stanford, walk around the campus and ask students and say, hey, this is the, our idea, is our problem, what we're solving, this is what we're gonna build, what do you think? And so you can do surveys and interviews um, and you can um, be resourceful and just um, talk to people, maybe not in the COVID, COVID times right now, but you can also do it online. You know, you can create Google uh, forms and send out, um, uh, find people, create Facebook pages or, or whatever social media, find your potential audience and ask them to give you feedback through a Google form, you know, things like that. So you can get feedback even before you bring the product to market to justify some of your assumptions. Um, the landing page is your website. So when you direct people to more information, have a landing page, even if it's not totally built, even if it's just one, one page. Um, there are a lot of tools like Wix that's so easy to create your first page, right? You can even create a video of yourself talking about your business, putting it on your first page, whatever it is. Make it simple, easy, but have a landing page because people, once you tell them about what you're doing, they'll want to learn more and they'll go to a landing page. Um, step six is a concept called SMART. Um, and this is really um, very important about um, achieving goals. A lot of the times as entrepreneurs, we set these humongous targets, huge, because everyone thinks, oh, we want to become a unicorn and we want to make a billion dollars. And you, you, set, you set these huge targets, which is good, but what's important is you have to be realistic. Now, what's even more important, you have to be realistic because as an entrepreneur, if you can't achieve those targets, it might um, deflate you right? So you want to have measurable targets. Now, one of the things that I say to entrepreneurs that I mentor um, is the first thing you can do every day is, is achieve something. You can actually make your bed. So that is an achievement. It's a simple, doable achievement. Um, making your bed, it's one task done. Then do the next task. So just make sure that when you when you work on your um, your goals, that it's um, very specific, very simple, easy to understand. Um, it's it's measurable. Um, try to make it um, so that um, not doesn't have to be tangible, but you know there could be numbers oriented. Um, there's okay. I want to speak to. I want to do an interview with 10, 10 people at the University of New South Wales and ask questions. Um, make it something that's 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 measurable and attainable, relevant, obviously, and then and then it's uh, achievable in a certain time 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 fashion. You will get these slides, so um, you can um, have a look at the smart goals uh, video for more information. Step seven, oh my favorite one, <laughs> um, network and mentor. Um, I think in life. The, the most for me because my superpower is building relationships it's all about relationships um, everyone has um, their own superpower so um, it's important always to to build relationships with everyone everyone has a has value in life okay in 
Um, so we all have our own unique superpower. And I think that's why that Ikigai is very important for you to do in the beginning. I figured it out later on that, you know, um, I've, I've started a lot of different businesses in life science, in wildlife conservation, in blockchain. That's not my area of expertise. Um, but my area of expertise there is I help raise money. I help them get into um, potential customers because I'm a business development guy. So understand your superpowers and always build your network. Everyone you meet, um, connect with them um, because they might be able to help you later on. I actually have a mentoring platform called Silicon Valley Headquarters. So if you ever need any mentoring, uh, let us know. And at the Academy of Entrepreneurs, we um, do a lot of events and uh, also help um, entrepreneurs like yourself, um, um, you know, from a mentoring standpoint. And, it, and a mentor is amazing because with their experience, their hindsight could be your foresight. And so you can learn it throughout your, your journey. And it's okay to fail and do it yourself. But having a mentor sometimes might get you there faster. Okay. So their, their hindsight could be your foresight. Step eight, uh, online revenue generation models. So we talked about this um, a, bit, a bit earlier, the different business models. And we had a question around it. Ads, uh, oh, also affiliates. So you can work with um, other groups and have affiliates and you pay them to um, open channels and, and generate income and you pay them 20% like a commission. Pay-per-view, um, everything's on demand these days. Um, Pay-as-you-go type of services. Then there's subscription, which seems to be very common these days. Um, commissions we just talked about. Listings and sponsorships as well. Step nine, oh, okay. So this is more Paula's uh, uh, area of expertise. Um, there's these uh, seven P's of marketing, uh, which is place, price, promotion, physical evidence, people, product, and process. I think um, I distilled it down to really at the end of the day, um, knowing your customer and figuring out your value to them. If you figure out how you can help them, um, then I think that's the first step. Paula, did you want to add anything here since uh, you are? It's about common there? sense and creating a synergy, but common sense is really hard as a business owner because you always get very attached with different steps of your business and different products or technology, whatever it is your priority. But I think with this one, I always think of like, let's say you're going to open a yoga studio. You are going to have physical evidence because it's going to be face to face. Who do you want as people at your reception? Who do you want in your call center? What kind of people do you want involved servicing your customers? You want them all to be very pure, enlightened, happy people. What yes. sort of product do you want to offer the best yoga class and you want to make it so good that you can stand out from all the competitors? What is the process? You can have this beautiful, peaceful Instagram page with positive messages. Then you go into the website, you want to take across the same colors and vibe into it. And when people walk into your studio, they need to see the same color and same experience, but obviously going from virtual to face to face. The place and place could be even a flyer that you are using to promote your business in different places or the physical location. The price, you might create a different pricing strategy. Obviously, now we're in lockdown, but when we're not in lockdown, you might have a price for early birds, people that wake up really early, you, which is always busy, like the 6, 7 a.m. yoga students are always fully booked. Then you can have a mom's fee which is a little bit cheaper for the 10, 10 o'clock when they drop the kids off the childcare center, then the supermarket and now they want some time for themselves. If you're going to launch in winter, what is your promotion? Like how many people are looking after the body in winter? Normally people towards spring start looking after the health by joining a gym or yoga studio. So I see the P's in marketing as something that changes on a daily basis. So I've done a lot of PR and marketing, for example, in the food industry. So if you're managing a cafe, you can sell a coffee at any price early in the morning. But after three o'clock in the afternoon, you might want to do coffee plus a free muffin because you're going to throw away the muffin anyways. And that builds a relationship so this person can come and buy coffee from you the next day. And the fact that you gave them something for free or a discount on the coffee. So it's understanding that your price, your promotion, your strategy will change according to the seasons, the different times, lockdown, no lockdown, the different regions where you operate. But a lot of it, it just comes down to what Chris is saying, offering really good product and service, but knowing your customers and your customers are your best teachers 
just go to them, just go, what other flavor do you want? How do you suggest, what would be the best price? How do you suggest we market? How did you find us? What did you like about us? Why are you calling us? What did your friends say when they referred us? And people love giving you feedback. And even if they give you non-positive feedback, that's great. You should triple thank them because then they are giving you an opportunity to become better for next time. So I personally love the marketing piece. I often do. I've got this as them. My bubble's are a little bit bigger. It's 21 piece. <laughs> There's a lot of action. There's a lot more things involved in it. And I just love playing with it at the different seasons, the different times, the different products. And for me, it's absolutely common sense because I spend a lot of time like you, Chris, with the customers getting feedback. Very important. Very, very important. It's funny, like we've got Alessandro here that will share his experience. Every time someone bites his gnocchi, just goes, best gnocchi in the universe. What do you do? You just put that in your tagline of your business and price. When you start at a market, you can start at any price. And towards the end of the day, if you've got anything left over, you can go, okay, buy two now. And the third, when you get in a takeaway box, you can have it afterwards. Like you can play with it, but your customers will give you so much insight. 100%. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, finally, um, let's just quickly. The best pitch ever. So let's take a look at the thinness first. This is that Sony product. Again, one of the best in the field. 1.2 inches down to 0 0.8 inches. This is the MacBook Air. Point seven six inches down to an unprecedented 0 0.16 inches. Now I want to point something out here. The thickest part of the MacBook Air is still thinner than the thinnest part of the TZ series. Okay? We're talking thin here. So it's so thin it even fits inside one of these envelopes that we've all seen float around the office. And so let me go ahead and show it to you now. This is it. Take it out here. This is the new MacBook Air, and you can get a feel for how thin it is. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Right. Amazing product here, full-size keyboard, full-size display. And this is what it looks like, isn't that amazing? I just love Apple. <laughs> um, okay, so, so 13 years old. 13 minute. years old, and we still watch it and get this from the new technology. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So um, I know that we went over time here, but um, this is just a quick um, overview that you can start your business, you can create your own idea, put your own business model, lots of tools online. You can use a canvases, business canvas, link canvas, um, the one pager. You can design your own name, logo yourself. You can create your own website on Wix. Okay, um, it might cost for hosting, etc., registering, but it's negligible. Um, you can do the proof of content yourself. You can go ask customers, real customers, um, put together your strategy. You can definitely find mentors out there that can help you that has been there, done that. Uh, is, um, create your own pitch deck, um, marketing plan, revenue, figure out your revenue models and even figure out if customers want it. So really um, everything's at your fingertips. So I think one thing to remember is that, you know, it might seem overwhelming, but the tools are there and, you know, there's the opportunities there and never, never give up. Um, you know, it is from a personal perspective, uh, it is a tough industry to be in, but it's extremely rewarding. You get to work with amazing people. You get to potentially change the world in your own way. And it's, it's very fulfilling. So never give up.
on your dreams and your passion. So Academies of Entrepreneurs, uh, our mission is to supercharge you with the entrepreneurial skills, network and funds to succeed. We hope you enjoyed uh, this, this presentation. Um, please join our community and we'll open up for Q&A. Amazing. Do we have two legends in the room, Chris? They can share their own feedback. I saw two familiar faces, Fernando and Ale. How are you, boys? Yes, we have Mr. Gnocchi, Alessandro, and Fernando here as well. Uh, they're, they're also here on um, an inter international student visa. So if you have any questions, um, please ask in the chat box or just uh, show your face and uh, you can ask your question as well. Unmute yourself. All right. Okay, we have one here. What websites do you recommend using to start up your business landing page? Is Wix preferred? Um, I think personally, it's an it's the easiest one to use right now. Um, it's very simple. I always go to GoDaddy. So I register my domain on GoDaddy. I have tons of domains I register because I have these ideas of these different businesses. So um, I register on, Go, on GoDaddy. And then I create a very basic site there, but there's tons of resources out there. WordPress, yep. Beautiful, Adam's using WordPress. We have one more question, Chris. Um, it's a question earlier, but I, but I felt that it should be asked at the last part. So we have a question from Kunit. What are the requirements to start the business from immigration point of view? We're just asking for the requirements. Um, okay, so I, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> uh, I think the best thing is if you can um, send your questions to info at aestudy.com and then we can direct you to the, the right, the right um, professionals. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, because um, the point is, I have the idea, I know how to do a website because I'm a designer, so uh, pretty much everything is clear. What is stopping me is the marketing research. So what, I, what I'm what i looking for is, I know my skills, but I don't know what exactly the market wants. So how can I sell my services or which kind of services should I do, etc. So in which way I can find these answers? Thank you. Yeah, is it Natty? Yeah. Uh, so I think the first thing um, I would do is um, uh, go through um, a customer persona or an assessment on who your customers are. So there are a few, if you just go on Google, you can find customer personas. And you can, you can document who you think your customers are, their demographic, who they are, their, you know, their spend, et cetera, where they are, things like that. And when you go through that process, one of the most important things is you're figuring out the value proposition. So why would they want to use your service or your product? Um, this is really important. The, the value proposition is, 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 is one of the most important things to, to um, go through. Um, secondly, once you go through that process, um, try to find you know, simple ways of finding your customers. So um, either online or offline. And um, you know, if you can start talking to a few, then you will discover more and more. But going through the process, you'll end up finding and discovering yourself where to find these customers. So I'll give you an example. Um, I invested in a company that had a rich, it was a messaging app. And at the time there was tons of messaging apps. And so when we were building it, um, we had only screenshots. And so, like I said, we went to all these different universities, we went to Harvard, uh, not Harvard, um, Stanford College, we went to Menlo College, and we just walked around and talked to students. And we asked them, what do you think about this product? And then we ended up discovering that 
you know, some of them, you know, the percentage of students that actually liked our app, and then we they recommended things as well where for us to go online. So you discovered things along the way. So I think um, one value proposition: go through the customer persona and identify who your customers are, and then two, get out there, try to talk to a few customers, and then it'll lead to something. Any other comments from anyone? Chris, we have three more questions in the chat box, but I guess Margarita um, is raising her hand, so I think we can um, take our question first. Yeah, thank you so much. And I want to thank you for an amazing session uh, that's really uh, interesting and inspiring for me. And uh, my question is, how can I uh, register my business officially and how can I like officially hire employees? Like what are the procedures to do that? Yes, so um, we can send you more information uh, offline, but um, I think the first step is you can register your business on ASIC um, and then see if the business name is available. Um, registering the business will cost around 500 or so dollars. Um, then you also need to look at if you need an ABN. If it's um, a hobby, uh, but then obviously you guys are wanting to create businesses, then you need an ABN for tax purposes. Um, and that's the starting point. Um, uh, and then, um, you know, we can send more information as well uh, in terms of some steps. All right, thanks. How many questions, Chris, are you willing to answer? Because we have more. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, please go ahead. I'm just ready right. to check. Yeah. So we have a question from Yusuf. Um, he's asking, how can how can you learn e-commerce? Feel free if you want, feel free to answer that, Chris. How can you learn e-commerce? Wow, that's an open uh, question. Um, so I, I used to manage eBay back in the day and um, the CEO at the time was John Donahoe and he was creating this concept where it's not um, online and offline, but there's a blur between online and offline and it's just commerce opportunity. Um, nowadays, we're seeing a lot of op um, people going online, you know, because of COVID, as we saw. Um, I think the first thing is to look at what big players are doing in the space, like Amazon. Follow follow these companies, you know. If you want to get into e-commerce, Shopify, etc., follow these companies. Look at their strategy, where they're headed, um, and the key here is is look understanding the market. There's also a wealth of um, um, what's it called? Uh, not documents, but um, studies from like make sure you, you listen to reputable ones like Gartner, Statistica or, or Forbes or others that are creating um, these documents around the future of e-commerce or PwC and, and others. So you can find a wealth of information online and, and it will give you an overview of the, the market. So look at the market through studies, look at what the, the, the companies are doing in the space and then you'll figure out you know, where their opportunities are, you know, that um, that you might be able to start a business on. Very high level, but um, hope that helped. Yeah, and thank you, Chris. I think we have another question from Maram. Um, I think she's asking, if I have a business and it's, and it's hard to get my audience, what should I do? Um, interesting, um, hard to get your audience. So, I think a lot of people go on social media first. Um, you know, there's um, a lot of opportunities, you know, with Instagram, TikTok, get your customer. I'm really not a TikTok person or um, my Instagram's not so, I don't have many followers. But um, I think that's the, the key here is um, in the digital space, not just social media, but blogging and, and, and being active online. The more active you are, the more discoverable you are. So um, Paula, she's amazing at TikTok and Instagram. She's always there. Alessandro and, and Fernando, they have huge following compared to me. Um, but they're very active on, on, on these channels. Um, people want to see fun, interactive content. 
and quite regular as well. So I think one thing is being online is very, very important. Create a thought leadership around what you're doing because that's the first step. Um, because when people see you, then they'll be able to see social proofs that you're everywhere. You're doing a lot of things. You're doing, um, you're active, you're active in, the, in maybe discussions, you're doing webinars, you're doing blogs, you're on Instagram, all over the place. Build that, that thought leadership in the digital world. I think that's one, one, one thing that I could recommend. Um, and then, yeah, I would do webinars as well. Um, I would experiment and figure out how you can help people. One of my th things, my mottos is um, give before you get. So if you can help people, then the universe will give back to you. And this is, you know, in, in Silicon Valley, everyone's always giving. You know, you give free time all the time over there, but you're active. You know, I have a big network because I was very active. I was doing things. I was always saying yes to panels. I was always, I did a, a panel, moderated a panel discussion two weeks ago for the CEO of Summit. Um, I'm judging for a competition on, on Thursday for students. Um, I'm, I'm always active in the digital world as well. So people start to discover you. So create a digital presence, I think is very, very important. And it doesn't have to be just on social media. I think blogging is very important. Podcasts, people are doing podcasts as well, doing their own podcast channel. So figure out what your main channels are and then uh, make sure you create a good uh, content strategy on the thought leadership and then be active. Fernando, Ale, do you want to add anything there? I, I think Fernando and Ali can add to the, the next question if they wanted to take this question. Please. Um, the question is from Sushil Kumar. I think she's asking, what are the procedures to open a store in Australia? Ali, you want to take this question? Can you repeat that? Yeah, so he's asking, what are the procedures to open a store in Australia? Or what's the process? Well, what I did actually was just, um, I went to an accountant and, and I asked uh, what can I do, which is the best for me for uh, achieve my goal because I, I said like that I want to have uh, at that time I want to have some restaurant and then I want to um, do a, a franchising from there and etc cetera, etc cetera. and then they they suggest me to to do um, a business and so from there I, I registered the as um, we said before I registered my name on Alex and then from there um, I set up for um, yeah, as well at that time, even though, <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> that was my, my first step. Beautiful. Thank you, Ali. Anything else to add, Chris? No, I was just reading through some of these comments, uh, other questions as well. Um, there's a lot of questions that's coming in. Um, let me know if you still have the time to cover all of that. Yes, but before that, I'd love to do a, um, can we do a selfie with everyone? Oh, yeah, while I... If you guys can open your camera, let's take a selfie. And then we'll continue to um, answer more of these questions. All right, we need a few more people. Yeah. Open your cameras so we can do a quick selfie. Awesome, we can, okay, there. Nico, are you gonna do the selfie? Oh, okay, you're, you're doing the selfie. <laughs> I'll do it, I'll do it. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay. A few more. All right, we need a few more to open your cameras so we can have full screen at least. Thank you, Diego, Melissa. A few more people. Arif, Kumar, Jennifer, 
Millie there. I know there's two pages, right? I can't get two pages. We have the youngest Melissa entrepreneur there right next to you. Fantastic. <laughs> Okay. All right, you ready? One, two, everyone smile. Perfect. Okay, let's continue with the questions. Um, I know there's a lot of mentoring questions. So I, if you, if you want to, I've actually got a platform, a mentoring platform. If you want to go on that, it's actually a lot of templates and it's free. Um, it's siliconvalleyhq.com. Just mention um, when you register or you can uh, follow me on Instagram. Love that. <laughs> I never plug myself on Instagram. Um, Silicon Valley HQ and you can DM me um, and then I could see how I can help. Okay, so let's see more questions. Chat box here. Um, legal, yeah, I just don't know that I'm not a lawyer, so I don't want to misinform. But if you can email us at info at aestudy.com, um, we can direct you to the appropriate resources there. Um, do I need a coach, advisor, lawyer, mentor, or business developer? <laughs> Fully loaded question. <laughs> I think um, um, a lot of the times, you know, I'm all about ecosystem. I think it's important about, you know, meeting as many people as possible because I think, like I said, everyone has a superpower and uh, everyone has connections or has some experience. Um, but connecting to the startup ecosystem, and there's a lot, you know, you, you guys are all family now at Academy of Entrepreneurs. So um, happy to see how we can help. But there are a lot of, um, a lot of different ecosystems or groups that are helping. Even New South Wales government, there's a, in Wynyard Station, there's a, there's a space there. And so there's, there's events there, there's fish burners, there's a lot of different organizations where you guys could could tap into and, and build your own network and community and see what you need. Um, in the beginning, it's, it's all about talking to people, other entrepreneurs, because you learn from each other. You know, I think that's the key. In Silicon Valley, there's 13,800 funded startups. So there's tons of entrepreneurs. So me, I'm a dime a dozen there in Silicon Valley. There's so many entrepreneurs, um, but we help each other, right? And so you learn a lot just with other entrepreneurs. Um, but, you know, my key thing is always be with people that are smarter than you because, you know, I, I have all these business partners and they're all just so smart. I'm the dumbest one in the room, but you learn so much, so much from them. And you'll, do, you'll figure out, Melissa, what you need at the time. Um, but, you know, whether you need a, a, a mentor or you might, you know, bump into someone or you need a, a lawyer. But starting a business, it's, I think the key is really figuring out um, again, going through the Ikigai process and figuring out, is there something that the world needs that I'm passionate about and people will pay for, you know, and, and I know it sounds um, hard um, and it is, but um, I think it's the first steps and there's a lot of resources and, and um, tools to help you put together your startup, your, your framework, and we can help there as well. Um, LinkedIn page, Christopher Peralta. Um, what else? Where's questions here? I like questions. Um, and Fernando Ale, um, please join in any of the, add anything. If I want to set up my own business in Australia, how do I apply for a visa? Can my company? Okay, Atom, um, you, yeah, again, info at aestudy.com and we can direct you. Board members, do you know if the board members in a company directory can be overseas and not in Australia? And also, do you know if family members can be part of a board of a company? Yes, you can have um, board members that are family members. Um, you you want to be very selective of um, the board because when you if you go down the round ra the, the round of investments, um, you know investors will start to question 
um, you know, who's on your board and what's their roles and responsibilities, even founders as well. Sometimes I've, I've, you know, I've had one company where we had a sizable investment, millions of dollars. And um, when they came in, they plugged in millions of dollars. So everything, all the shares we invested um, had to be revested and they evaluated every, the whole team because they became a sizable equity holder in our company. So yeah, in the beginning, no problem, but always board members are, are very important that they know the business and everyone has a role, strategy, business, technology, or whatever it may be. So don't, don't just choose friends there, okay? Choose people for the for, to help your company get to where you want to take it. Yeah. What's the best option to do shipping in, say, in Australia? I find quite expensive, the couriers. Fernando, that could be a question for you. What is the best option to do shipping interstate in Australia? I found quite expensive, the couriers. Do you... Well, hey, hi everyone. Um, well, that is a quite general question, you know, because the courier, it's, uh, it, it depends on the product 100%. Um, some products is good to send it by courier, other is better if you send it by freight, uh, like a truck. Uh, it depends 100% on the product you want to post. Um, yes, what I can say to you that is, as bigger the box and as heavier the product is going to be more expensive. Um, but yeah, logistics uh, in Australia are not cheap, but it's just part of the business we have here. Uh, on the other hand, what I, what I would like to add is that uh, Australian people, Australian consumers, when they buy something, they used to pay for the postage separate uh, from the product. So it's we all know uh, people that lives here that when we when we buy something we need to pay for the post so it's part of the business just to summarize and fernando do you want to just give 30 seconds on what you do yeah well um just to summarize in one phrase uh, i import uh, traditional argentinian products um, to australia so basically what I import are um, uh, different uh, categories of food uh, from Yarba Mate, that it's like a green tea we have in Argentina, and uh, some cookies uh, that we have also there, and alfajores, that it's a very specific cookie we have there, and it's really particular and tasty. Uh, and also some different uh, bites, uh, and uh, and food basically. Beautiful. Where can they get more information about Yerba Mate? Um, I, I have a website. Um, there you will be able to find the products, but also all the benefits and properties that uh, can give you uh, consuming this product, the Yerba Mate. So I will write it here. the The website is. HelloGerbamate.com.au. Beautiful. And Mr. Gnocchi, do you want to give 30 seconds on what you do? Yeah, of course. Um, I'm doing the best gnocchi in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. For who doesn't know what the gnocchi are, is a type of pasta made with potato and flour. Uh, it's typical Italian. Um, it's kind of like a dumpling, you can call, but and maybe put it in flour so yeah um right now we we are working on on doing like a package and and distribution around sydney my product and, and for everyone on the 29th um of next month every 29th we have an event and mr gnocchi is going to teach you his secrets so you can cook your own gnocchi so look out for that on Eventbrite. And Mr. Gnocchi, what, what's the significance about 29th of every month? Yeah, 29 is, um, we want to create this kind of uh, movement where everybody, they're gonna have some gnocchi on the 29th. So the 29th is the lucky gnocchi day where they, the tradition starts from Argentina, um, from some Italian, they were, 
they were they went there and every 29 they decide to do this kind of um thank you day where somebody they were the lucky guy was just found some money under the table under the the plate and so we want to create kind of like that uh, kind of like something like um bring this gnocchi uh culture here in australia so yeah it's gonna be fun <laughs> awesome um okay we've got another five minutes for any questions don't be shy we're here to help And you can turn on your camera and um, your mic if you want to ask a question as well. Uh, hi, Christopher. Hi, Kumar. Um, my name is Ravant. I yeah, uh, uh, just a quick question. So uh, I was thinking about this mentoring thing, and uh, yeah, at, uh, as a student, it is uh, uh, kind of um, hard to get up and uh, make the first step. Because uh, we students always think about the costs involved even mm -hmm. before setting up a business. Because we students um, uh, obviously don't have the funds to go through. But the slide which you have mentioned that uh, the cost total cost is zero uh, for all those things you have mentioned. That was really cool. Uh, but uh, I was just thinking, um, can I get some mentorship and... Um, probably some guidance from your website or is there any application procedure that I should go through or for your, for your um, on your website to get some mentorship? Or... No, so I, I have my templates are free for you to, to sign up at the moment. So, um, yep. uh, you know, I think one, one important thing when starting a business is, is creating a bit of a framework. Um, and, you know, there are a few templates that I put there. There's like, 10, 11 templates there. One is um, your executive summary. So it's a one page on your business. One is customer persona. One is your KPI metrics. One is your business model. One is your revenue model. One's your forecast. One's your investor deck. So I've streamlined the main ones that startups sort of need. But, you know, I think um, that's the trivial stuff. I think the important thing is to, to figure out what you want to do from a business standpoint. Okay. And again, I, I go back to Ikigai because, you know, in my life, I've always followed my passion, what I'm good at. Um, and I think uh, what people need, but it's more on my assumptions, right? And a lot of the times we don't get paid for it. That's the hardest one. It's making it into a sustainable business. So I've learned a lot through 20 years of doing this. And so I think um, going through this process as a student as well, I think it's a great reflection. Um, secondly, look at the market, you know, dig deeper, be a matter expert in the market. If you want to learn e-commerce, understand e-commerce. I'd be downloading the financials about Amazon, what they're doing, their, their you know, yearly reports, look at their strategy, where they're headed. I'd follow one player that you admire or you want to want to potentially be acquired by or, or get inspired by and, and go down that path and be a matter expert in one discipline, right? Don't do my, what I did. I did a lot of things and uh, I think focus, be a matter expert. So one, research, two, be a matter expert. And then three, um, you'll discover things along the way if you open yourself to the not to the universe, to the ecosystem. I know you guys are international students, but Fernando's doing amazing. Mr. Gnocchi's doing amazing. You know, they're fantastic. And, you know, you can build your own network, right? And you can learn it. And there's a lot of resources. You have this family now as well. So we'll see how we can help um, as much as we can. But, uh, yeah, I think if you can find out your area of expertise and go deep and be a matter expert, I think yeah. um, that's, that's one of the first steps. So you can do a lot of things before you even commercialize anything. Yeah, so yeah, so that, that was great. Uh, thank you very much for the insights. And uh, yes, I do, have a, uh, I do have my area of expertise, uh, which is healthcare. I'm a pharmacist from India. Huge. So I, don't, I want to do something with the pharmacy services. Huge. Healthcare um, in light of what's been going on in the world is gonna be huge. 
So you yeah, can... yeah, I have experienced the gap um, myself, and my friend has suffered with the uh, with with the same kind of problem which I was trying to solve. So I think yeah, I will be able to make some customer interviews and go forward, and I will definitely reach out for help. Um, and also and look. I be specific in that industry look at the different players in the ecosystem so there could be accelerators incubators co-working spaces uh, organizations focused on healthcare or health tech yeah. anything health related life science pharma etc um, look at those companies that are innovating and they might have some innovation offices or you know work you know build relationships there like there's so much things you can do just in the healthcare space and um, yeah you know, Again, it's all about being a matter expert, understanding the market, what you're going to do in that space. Yep. Cool. Completely. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Okay. That was great. I have a quick question. Okay. Yes, Suman. Okay. Okay. I recently Probably invested invested. my business, uh, a company. So we know that we should do this, we should do that. My question is, what do most international students do wrong? What should I absolutely avoid when starting a new business? Wow. Um, I think I'll start. I think um, it's okay to do things wrong and it's okay to fail. Um, you know, it's not perfect all the time. World's not perfect. People aren't perfect. You're going to make mistakes. Um, and it's, it's actually important to make mistakes because you learn from them yourself. And at the end of the day, it's your journey, Suman. You know, this is your company. This is your journey in your life. Um, this is your choice you're making. And at the end of the day, you know, that's the most important thing to realize. It's no one else's journey. Okay. Um, what mistakes? Um, I think my main, I think I've had many mistakes in my career. I think uh, one is the lack of focus. And that's what I mentioned earlier. Um, I think if you focus, be a matter expert, know what you're really good at and what you love and figure out what people need and they'll, you'll get paid for, I think that's really a focus. Um, I do too many things. Um, secondly is um, I also thought I could do things alone and um, it's always important to be around people that can help you um, and they're smarter than you. So I think building these relationships is very important and partnering with people is very important as well. Um, mistakes, I don't know, uh, Fernando, Ale, do you have any feedback here? Well, if I start with my mistakes, we can be here for, for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah, man. so many, um, the important thing is uh, mistakes are going to happen. Uh, like uh, what I constantly deal with, uh, I do it like every day, is the balance between the important things, the strategic things, and the daily things you need to accomplish. The tactics, again, the strategy. How do you balance that uh, in time and focus, you know? Because um, right now I'm building a different website that it's really important to have my sales, but also I need to set up really good my accounting software that is zero. So I, I won't be able to sell if I don't do the, the basis, the admin part, you know? So it's constantly balancing, but I can't stop selling because if I stop selling, I don't have the funds to reinvest in my company. So you are always going to be playing with those hands, with the balls or in both hands, like balancing uh, strategic against tactics, at least in my experience. Um, then you have executional mistakes all the time, uh, setting up prices, um, defining uh, um, a courier for your products. Uh, you know, you will be facing issues and bad decisions every day. So here, the important thing is to realize you made a, a mistake and learn from that. That is the, 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 my main advice regarding this point. Okay. Uh, Daryl, I have a list of all the accelerators, incubators, even investors and um, blah, blah, blah. Just DM me and I can, um, on Instagram, and I can send it to you guys. All right. Last question, so that everyone can have some dinner. 
Have some gnocchi. After the 29th, when you guys join Mr. Gnocchi's uh, um, lucky gnocchi day, um, you'll be able to make your own gnocchi. Okay. Uh, I guarantee it's a good session. You have to bring you have to bring your own wine as well during okay. the session. You need the wine. <laughs> yeah, it's really good with the wine. All right. I think that's all about it, Chris. We all had right. a really great session. Guys, feel free to reach uh, to reach out to us if you need, if you have other questions. Unfortunately, this is the time we all have. Um, for the session, but feel free to connect with us. Uh, feel free to connect with Chris, with Fernando, with Ali, with me, with the entire Academy of Entrepreneurs community. We'd love to help you. And keep safe, guys. And stay safe. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>